I do talk a lot about smart trainers, but today I rewind back a little bit, back to basics, and we'll talk about what smart trainers are and how they work. Original indoor trainers had knobs or dials that you'd turn to increase or decrease resistance. Along came fluid trainers and wind trainers where you'd change through your gears to change resistance, which was more like riding outdoors. And then along comes smart trainers, well specifically interactive smart trainers, where the resistance of the unit is automatically controlled by your PC, tablet devices or phones, or head units on your bike. Let's have a close look at exactly how this works. The interactive smart trainer we're looking at today is the original Wahoo Kicker unit. You can see here I've removed the rear wheel from my bike and mounted it here on the cassette, which is compatible with the group set that I run, so 11 speed Shimano. So once the bike is secured in place using a rear skewer, it's just like riding a bike. Even with that familiar sound of a free hub. The big advantages of a direct drive interactive smart trainer is that it can provide an almost infinite level of varying resistance through the electromagnets in here, but also it reports the power that you're doing. So if you don't have a power meter on your bike, this will report the power that you're putting out to drive your bike forward. Most interactive smart trainers require an external power source and when plugged in can provide levels of resistance anywhere between zero watts and up to 2000 watts of resistance. So lots of training zones there to be had. Combining the smarts of these trainers with either your computer, laptop or phone or other device, you can get some really, really interesting training features out of these units. First up, erg mode. That is where you set the watts and no matter how fast you pedal, it will make you do those watts. We're very familiar with a predefined workout plan. That's exactly what erg mode will do. 300 watts is 300 watts no matter how hard you pedal, 250, 260. You can do a lot of stuff with that. That's the traditional workout mode that you may be familiar with. Sim mode is designed with some complex calculations built in, so that'll take into account your weight, your height, the bike you're on, and some estimated aerodynamics. But I guess the easiest way to explain sim mode is that if you're going up a 5% gradient on the screen, it feels like you're going up a 5% gradient. 10%, it feels like 10%. The same in the reverse order as well. 0% feels like you're riding on a flat road, and downhill, it will actually simulate downhill. So releasing all resistance on this unit, you've got to change gears into your 5311 and spin up if you want to keep pedaling, just like outside. With platforms such as Zwift using sim mode, it's changed things entirely. No longer are these indoor trainers, they're indoor cycling simulators. But it might be a while before we see that word drop from the marketing and on the box. So there it is, a quick overview and back to basics on what an interactive smart trainer is and how it does it. In summary, up a hill, it gets hard. I turn around and it simulates downhills. Life is much better on the downhills. Okay, thanks for watching.